This is the sound of refusing to give in. It's leaving nothing to chance. Searching relentlessly for the right, the only treatment option that will keep a heart beating. Fortunately, the Christ Hospital Health Network has groundbreaking treatment options unavailable anywhere else in the country, developed with help from our own physicians. That's what makes us Greater Cincinnati's Heart Hospital and one of the top heart hospitals in the world. The Christ Hospital Health Network, everything it takes. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 827, bringing a lifetime of fitness expertise to Team Fit With Me with Renee and Billy Dole. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. <laughs> Welcome, friends, to the Pound This Podcast. Before I get into this conversation with Renee and Billy, all about their fitness expertise and team fit with me, I want to tell you about Clean Eats in Newport here in Cincinnati, which I know a lot of people that are on Team Fit With Me have used because it's convenient, it's healthy choices, and dang is it easy. (laughs) As a person who has meal prepped forever, it is so nice to let someone else cook for you, do all the dishes. All you got to do is pop it in the microwave and eat it and you're done. And there's a lot more variety on the front of each package, especially if you do the frozen grab and go meals, the macros, the calories. If you do the weekly meal plan, which is what I do, there's a whole grid that you can just like download, screenshot, put on your phone, build it into your MyFitnessPal. If that's what you're doing, if you're counting calories, counting macros, there's high protein options, vegetarian options, low carb options. (laughs) I mean, there's the family style meals, there's the pizzas, there's the salads. There is just the cafe to go in and grab lunch if you're looking for a healthy option instead of going through a drive through Clean Eats in Newport is absolutely chef's kiss amazing if you're trying to be healthier and you want to be more consistent, but you struggle again with cooking or just coming up with recipe ideas or you find yourself really hungry and then you're grabbing for something that you end up regretting later. So if you're in Cincinnati, check out Clean Eats in Newport. They are amazing. Now let's check out Renee and Billy. Thank you so much for listening to the Pound This Podcast. I am Amanda Valentine. Now you've heard on this podcast multiple times over multiple years, Sarah and Team Fit With Me and her whole story and now all of the clients that she works with and, you know, it's Team Fit With Me and the whole team, which it's amazing that part of her team is her family, who I'm welcoming on this podcast now, which is Renee and Billy Dohler. How are you guys? Great. Hi. How are you? Hi, Amanda. Thanks so much for having us. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I love that. Yeah, that Sarah has a whole team of people, but it's also a family affair because the whole family is in to fitness. So has it, has it always been that way? Have you always been a very fit family? Let me go first. Let me go. Um, well, yeah, I guess, um, I've been in the fitness industry for a little over 40 years. It's been my occupation and I started out as an aerobics instructor and, uh, evolved into bodybuilding and coaching people of all fitness levels, abilities, disabilities. And, um, Yes, and Billy as well has has worked out. Um, it's just always been part of our life. So, were you a, a personal trainer, a fitness instructor too, Billy? Um, only for myself and my close friends until I retired from my primary job. Okay. Um, but I always um, I've been into working out for since I was twenty, so that's a long time. Um, and I always was fascinated by the science behind it. It wasn't for me, it was never about, you know, showing up and seeing how much weight I could lift. <laughs> I really, I really like to take a dive into what makes this happen. Why do muscles grow? Well, how do we get stronger and bigger? So for me, that was always a real big part of the hobby. And I always considered it a hobby. So when I transferred that to training clients, it was a pretty smooth transition because I already came into it with all the science. Yeah, that's awesome. And as far as the the household, it was a very fit household. Both of our kids are very fit. Um, But putting it into context without digressing too much, you know, keep in mind when Sarah had her weight struggles as a teenager, I believe they were probably exacerbated by the fact that her parents were very fit. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't think at the time that was necessarily a good thing for her. Did you guys Um, ever have a, 
you know, a heart to heart conversation about all of that? Hundreds. <laughs> how, I mean, how has that changed over the years? I mean, I'm sure it was different for her in the moment living through that, the conversations versus where she's at now having her own fitness business. Well, she was always beautiful and always athletic, you know, and still is. And, but it was her struggle for, I just want like her to be happy and healthy. And we supported her in whatever decision she made and, you know, her journey and, um, and he, and she was, and of course still is fit. She, you know, was an equestrian. That was her sport. And where a lot of kids were playing soccer and everything, she was very competitive and went on to become a professional. I don't know if you knew that about her. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, so she was also very athletic in her unique way, um, but it wasn't always viewed by mainstream people as being, um, you know, being, you know, athletic. Yeah. So, but we had lots of conversations with her and, you know, all you want as a parent is for your kid to be happy and healthy and whatever she chose to do, we would support her in whatever she chose to do. Yeah, that's awesome. So, well, Billy said his background is like being kind of driven by the science of fitness. So what made you attracted to working in the fitness business and then keeping you there for 40 years? Right. Vanity, honestly, <laughs> is, is how it all started after I had my second child, which was Sarah. Um, and I was never an athletic teenager. I guess I always considered myself a good social athlete, but in my generation, I don't think women were as pushed as much as other generations after me. Um, and um, so I, I had Sarah. It was hard to get my figure back. And I started taking aerobic classes that back in the 80s, started taking aerobic classes. And I was like, darn, I could do this. Then I got certified as an aerobic instructor. And Nobody I rocked that kooky thong thing like she did. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah still busts my chops about the outfits. Oh my gosh, what we used to wear. It was crazy. And then step aerobics came into the scene. And so I was one of those on the forefront of that. And I, I, you know, I was in Macy's with my step and doing all of that. And it was a time, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. um, doing my own choreography and um, making, making her own tapes, making my own oh, tapes. Well, that's I had, awesome. Now I'm really dating myself. I had dual tape decks and I can control the pitch control, how many beats per minute. And I was really into that. But I, I, I got away from that because of, I was seeing people in a gym environment. And I realized the only way to really change the shape of your body was through bodybuilding, was for, through real resistance training. So that gave me the, you know, that's where I became interested. And I saw not only with myself, but other people, you can change your body with resistance. Mm -hmm. Aerobics, like a year and a year from now, you're still going to look the same. It's, but there was, there was an economic factor here as well. The reality was she could teach maybe two aerobics classes a day. Because when you teach an aerobics class or a step aerobics class, you actually do it, right? Yeah, correct. So you can only do maybe two a day, three if you're nuts. <laughs> and yeah. you get paid 30 bucks a piece. Well, day, yeah. she could train six people a day for 150 bucks an hour and, yeah. and sit on their chair while she trained them. So it just made more economic sense if she was going to be active in the fitness business. Mm -hmm. um, I just made air quotes for people not watching. Um, <laughs> But in the fitness business, it was much more profitable and reasonable to take the personal training route. Yeah. So then I went on and I got uh, more certifications, really got into bodybuilding, never competed, um, but I judge shows and <coughs> it's just sort of became my passion, but not, but I also like challenging people when women come back from having children you know, that's, I, I had gotten certified in post, you know, natal uh, training, as well as co um, competitive equestrians, because Sarah got me into that, and they needed training, and in barns, we would, uh, I've designed gyms for inside of a barn and trained clients there who were competing on horses, as well as people that have special needs. So I would, I would keep on going back and furthering my education. And I love the challenge of teaching somebody um, who has special needs because it challenges me yeah. as well 
you know, makes me learn. So, um, yeah. So that's sort of, and it's evolved. And then later on, I had a weight loss practice and I worked with um, plastic surgeon for people before and after uh, surgery, a cosmetic surgery, as well as, um, yeah, all kinds of. Well, what would happen very often with um, cosmetic and plastic surgeons is, you know, people would go in, this is 10, 15, 20 years ago. But a woman would go in with the idea that she was going to have all of her sins lipo sucked away. Yeah. Um, and the doctor would deliver the bad news that not going to work because if we suck all the fat out, you're just going to be a bag of skin. But why don't you get a facelift? <laughs> <laughs> so the doctor would sell the facelift and then he would say, and get a personal trainer too. And a diet consultant. So Renee got a lot of work from plastic surgeons that she was associated with, from people who went in with the idea they were going to get a lipo redo yeah. and wound up getting a facelift. <laughs> that be, I mean, then that'd be interesting for them that then they could, I mean, obviously you can't do your own facelift, but they could do right. all of the own work of sculpting their body, though. I mean, I'm sure that had to be eye-opening for several people. It is. And you know what? It's a really um, to teach somebody. And to take somebody who has no idea what they're doing and make them a gym rat is just fantastic. It's so sat- gratifying, satisfying. It's just great. And working with Team Fit with me and taking people from zero, a lot of the people come to us having never lifted weights, not knowing what they're doing. And then, you know, after a couple of years being like, I need a gym because I've outgrown or I need equipment because I've outgrown the bands and the kit which we'll talk more about later on, um, uh, you know, they need more. But it's, it's, so, it's, it's such a great feeling to, yeah. uh, to help somebody evolve. So for both of you now, what is your, what your own personal fitness look like? You want to see? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can tell. Girl, <laughs> you work out. out. <laughs> I, can't see <laughs> um, I I, you know, I train four or five days a week, whatever my schedule allows. It's consistent. You know, that's the whole thing from doing this for over 40 years. People are like, you know, what can I do? And I said, just shoot, just stick with it. Just keep doing the same thing. Um, I'm not a huge cardio person. It's great for your heart, but I'm all about, you know, watching diet and, um, and lifting weight. And as, hard and heavy as this old girl can handle right now, because obviously as we age, our joints can't always support the amount of weight, but still always challenging and not just going through the motions, but, you know, just hitting the iron, going to the gym. Yeah. What about you, Billy? I'm uh, in a personal renaissance right now, as far as my physique is concerned, because I lost essentially two years. Um, And during those two years, I lost 18 pounds of body weight but my waist size stayed the same. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Um, It's because all the 18 pounds was muscle. So it started with shoulder surgery, pardon my dental work. Um, (laughs) And that took me out, took me out of the gym for, I guess about nine months was just getting back into the gym very carefully. (laughs) I can assure you because the last thing I wanted was a setback. And then I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. So that was a uh, really awesome adventure, but took me back out of the gym, took me off of all my hormone replacement treatment drugs, and basically lost another six pounds. You know, people say, I can't work out, I'm gonna get fat. Well, for me, it's the opposite. I can't work out, I get small. So I'm now, I would say probably three months plus back in the gym, full, full strength, full strength, so to speak. Um, the changes that I've made to my body in that period of time are shocking. Um, same way size. <laughs> um, so I'm really in a very good place as far as my enthusiasm factor. And, you know, when you think about training for 42 years, you know, you could say, wow, the enthusiasm factor has got to be difficult to maintain. Well, for me, having been on the sidelines for that period of time, um, 
there's no fat there's no issue at all with enthusiasm i'm like the happiest guy in the gym like oh, <laughs> look at me i'm doing pull-ups <laughs> Well, like going through, I mean, that's just intense to go through prostate cancer. Has that changed your perspective on health at all, going through that whole journey? Um, no, I'm still a moron where that's concerned. <laughs> <laughs> it may have changed my, it may have, it may have, and it's unusual, I think, for it to take somebody to get to my age to, to lose their immortality factor. Um, but, you know, there's always part of us that thinks that there's some bulletproof element to us, maybe... Yeah. We're not subject to all those things. You know, it's like it's like when you hear uh, so-and-so had a heart attack. Was he a smoker? Yeah. You yeah. know, because we, we're looking for something because I'm not. Yeah. So I guess, you know, it kind of it was kind of a wake up like, yeah, dude, you could get cancer and, and get really sick and die. So appreciate stuff more, which I was not bad at to begin with. Yeah. Well, I mean, now you're definitely appreciating it now that you can just be physical and go back to the gym again. That's yeah. right. That's it. So do you guys work out together? (laughs) Rarely. (laughs) Um, And really, it's because of our schedules. You know, we just sort of grab it where we can. Though I do like um, working out with Billy because every trainer needs a trainer. You know, it's it's and we all have different nuances. And he also will push me and um, make me do things maybe I don't want to do or help me get that last rep. Uh, I, I enjoy training with him. We just don't do it very often. So, Usually when we're on vacation because we're not right. pulled in any other direction. So we'll wind up, I'll train her if we're on vacation. And it's so nice because I don't have to think. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's just, it's so, it, it, it's, I mean, because it is a luxury to have a trainer. There's no two ways about it. Um, it is. Which nice is thing. a good segue, by the way, um, into online personal training. Because one of the things when I train somebody in person, pardon me, I'm like their valet. Like I, I do everything but lift the weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hand it to you. I put it away. I wipe the bench. I do this. I do that. Well, you can't do that online, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I almost sometimes feel a little bossy. <laughs> Put those dumbbells away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how has that been a, a transition for for you guys and doing virtual personal training? I mean, you're saying just you know per, training people in person versus doing it virtually. What does that feel like? What are what are the benefits, etc.? Well, it's very interesting. I never would have thought that you could get a great workout um, using you know virtually. Number one, not having that hands on a trainer there. But also not having a whole lot of equipment at home. People think you have to have a lot of equipment. And when they join our team, Team Fit With Me, there's a basic kit that we have people order on Amazon that has a a stability ball, bands, um, and, uh, you know, booty bands, uh, bands with a door anchor, loop bands. Not a big deal. But it's amazing the workout that they can get. It's nice because, and of course, during COVID, nobody was leaving their home. Um, So it's nice because you can get a great workout in your home. But then a lot of people want to still stay just because of the time factor. You don't have to travel to the gym. You know, it's it's just you you fit it in. And then also the accountability factor of knowing that your trainer is going to be there. You don't have to go anywhere, but they have to, you know, sign up, be there get online and it works so well it really does but i honestly i never would have thought it would have been something that would have any traction but it has a lot of it so for for you guys with team fit with me um i'm imagining you're doing like a blend where some people you just kind of like prescribe the workouts here's what it is you i trust you go on your own and then some people you like actually like log on together and like go through the workout together absolutely and, and every variation thereof. Um, we encourage people to, to at least have uh, an initial uh, session, you know, group of sessions just to make sure they're executing the, the exercises properly. But I have people that don't train at all without me. So, you know, Renee will say, I got to do a consult with so-and-so. And I'll be like, don't bother. She's not even going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> she just waits until I get online and I tell her what to do. Then there are people who will train with me or Renee like once a week. 
more so with me. Renee does more of the consulting. I do more of the training. Okay. Um, so maybe they'll train with me once a week and train twice a week or three times a week independently. And we work together to coordinate, you know, what they were going to do on what day. Um, but it's just really, in, and again, I was pleasantly surprised because I thought logistically it would be really difficult. And it's so not. Um, just instructing people, demonstrating, it, it really is so seamless and so easy. Uh, and again, like Renee said, they don't have to drive anywhere. Like, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, during their lunch break, you know, if they had, they could carve out some time or, you know, at any time, it just works out well for everybody. It really does. Although our biggest fear, I remember, was what happens if something happens? Like you're looking at somebody and what if something went wrong? Like, do you dial 911? Like, what if, so but it doesn't happen. You know, it doesn't. But, you know, you start asking yourself all these questions before um, we really dove into it. And it, it's an awesome way to train. And also on that note, um, people take Billy to the gym with him. They'll bring their tripod and their phone or their tablet, and he'll be training people in a gym environment virtually. That's cool. And that we were surprised. Yeah, I, was, I, I thought that was going to be a, a real difficult thing to do, but it works fine. They bring their little tripod. I, I'm gonna get, I keep telling some of my clients I'm going to get them a little service animal vest. To put on their <laughs> um, but they'll set me up, and we go through the workout. Just a quick side thing. I've had some very funny things happen, like the client walks away, and now some random person in the gym comes walking over to the camera, to the phone or the iPad, and they're looking at me like I'm in an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're just, like, looking at me. And I don't know if they think I'm, like, a, a YouTube or Peloton, <laughs> but they don't seem to think I can see them. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> so so I get a real kick out of after their second or third visit, I'll go, morning. And the per <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm watching they thought you. I was a, yeah, they thought I was a screensaver. <laughs> like, Your form is wrong, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I oh no, I charge for that. No, yeah, that's true. <laughs> no freebies. <laughs> no free form advice. Have you ever done anything like that? Have you ever tried any kind of virtual training? Have you ever gone into that? Um, do you know what's funny? I didn't do virtual training, but during COVID, I did virtual um, physical therapy, which was similar because oh. it was also band work and being on the ball. Because I um, right after COVID hit, I had a really bad bout of sciatica, which took Ooh. me out of exercising sure. the ways that I exercise and then shut me down. Cause like literally everything I did would put me in pain and like, I couldn't even like, I couldn't lay down. I couldn't sit up. I couldn't do anything. Oh and so, goodness. um, the only thing to do was to do physical therapy virtually. And so it, it was just, it was interesting. Cause I feel like it's different than training because there's so many stuff where they kind of just need to feel your body in, in physical, in physical therapy and to really like diagnose you more. So it, I mean, it was good for what it was. So, I mean, I did that, but I did not do um, virtual training. But I've tried, like, I think that if I had a trainer that was there with me like that, I think that would work for me. As far as me going to, like, YouTube and just watching videos and having the accountability of working out by myself, absolutely not. I know myself. And I'll go to the, I mean, I spend a time doing going to the gym six days a week, sometimes two a days. Like, I enjoy going to the gym but if I just had to like watch a YouTube video on my own without any sort of accountability, I would never do it. It's so weird because it's like, mm -hmm. why would I not do this when I love this? But it's human behavior is interesting. <laughs> is. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that what you guys are doing where you're having the accountability and then the person can choose to like know themselves enough of like, no, I need to take a tripod and take you to the gym with me or now I got this like just tell me what to do and I'll get it done I think that is so good to like meet everybody exactly where they're at so they they'll actually like accomplish their goals I feel like it gets and I'm sure you know you've been guys have been doing this forever that like once you somebody starts doing something that doesn't really serve them they'll do it briefly and then bail and then just do nothing like forever again until they pick it up again so I think you have to find your flow and your right people. Otherwise you're just going to like give up and be dormant forever until like there's some catastrophic right. breaking moment. And then you're like starting at rock bottom again, which that always sucks. <laughs> Obviously it does. 
but even you know even people that that are fit just to go over their workout to lay eyes on them to tweak it you know um, to have a professional one of us look at it really is is great like i said trainers need trainers too coaches want coaches it's it, it, you know it's important <laughs> those that, that other that that extra knowledge that everybody doesn't have it's it really takes you to the next level yeah i say and there's nothing intuitive about it that we always say oh yeah <laughs> nothing intuitive about have strength training you know there's nothing so yeah i will say for me in my journey i mean i was a personal trainer in person for a year and a half and now i mean i don't want to be a personal trainer anymore again like know your strengths and that but i pay a personal trainer now i go to group personal training at a gym and that's where i'm like mm-hmm. I'm like, I know what I'm doing to a degree, but I'm like, also you tell me what to do. <laughs> like, it just like, that's how I want to work out for me. So like, again, like what you're saying, like having a trainer is a luxury, but like, it also feels like a necessity. Like for me, I need an accountability person. I need somebody to push me that extra rep. I need somebody that's going to make me do bear crawls. Cause I won't do them by myself. I'm going to skip that one. Right. <laughs> and so it's like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, no, this is, this has to fit into the budget because this is necessary for my health. Even though I have the knowledge, I can do this myself. I won't. <laughs> so I feel like so many people, like just having that option, we're especially having virtual coaches and then with Team Fit With Me, then you have the whole nutrition piece and you have the whole hormonal piece and the gut health and everything else that you have to offer. It's like the perfect package of every aspect that you need to like really dig in and really make, you know, hit your goals and make some change towards what you right. want to change. I think just it's it's perfect to meet like literally every person where they're at. Well, as you know, the nutrition aspect is so important. Yeah. You know, that that you it, I, I used to say the hardest exercise was the push away from the table, which is really not true because we don't want to push away, but it's a matter of the things that we want to push away that aren't good for us. Um, but the nutrition is, I don't know, what do you think? 97% of? No, 80. <laughs> okay. 80, the whole world is 80, 20. The whole 80, 20. world is 80, 20. <laughs> And it includes diet and exercise. Uh, 80% of the salespeople generate 20% of the sales in every company in every part of the country. (laughs) 80-20 is everything. And it applies. The nutrition is, you know, huge. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a key element. And, of course, the fitness aspect is just the icing on the cake. You know, that's just the idea. But getting back to the group fitness, which you like to do, um, we've done groups. Billy's done groups of people. Uh, through virtual training as well. That's awesome. So people, yeah. So he's put that. It's a little together. like cat herding. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> you no, know, the only time it becomes a challenge, really, the only time is if they don't have um, parity in the equipment they're using. So if one person is using this kind of equipment and the other person is using this kind of equipment, the other person, using, you know, it becomes like, okay, you're doing this. No, you're doing. Uh, yeah, well, and it's hard to have... get eyes on everybody. Like we're trying to watch somebody do one thing and somebody doing the opposite thing all. Well, the once. most I'll do is the most I'll do is six, and I and that's too many, frankly. Yeah. Um, four is about ideal. Yeah. Four is about ideal. But you know, back to the whole, um, you know, group fitness training independently, whatever, whatever, whatever. It all comes down to the first certification I got. The last question on the test was, what's the best kind of exercise? And it was a trick question because the answer is the best kind of exercise is the exercise that you'll actually do. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So that's the best kind of exercise. However, there's a fine line between giving the client what she wants and also giving her the professional advice that she's paying for Mm -hmm. so you know sometimes we'll do a consultation and then i'm writing a program for somebody and she wants to do x y and z and i'm like sorry you're not doing z (laughs) (laughs) like i'm sorry you you're paying us for our expert opinion and advice and i understand that you want to do x y and z but for now it's it's just going to be x and y and we'll talk about z another time maybe yeah (laughs) Yeah, it's 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 funny how 
I don't know. I feel like as a trainer and then also as a health coach for a while, it is interesting how some people are like, this but not this. And it's like, well, if, if you were doing that and it's not working for you, <laughs> it's not right. working. And so that's uh. why you're here. But I mean, those are rough conversations to have. So it's, but I think as a person who has also lived the other side of that, it's something that you don't really understand until you live it. Like it's something where it's like, oh, I understand now why I wasn't doing this exercise or I wasn't doing Z until mm -hmm. I have the knowledge of doing the other thing. I'm like, oh, and now I understand why that I wasn't ready for that or why that doesn't exist. But it's like you have to trust, fall, and do it first. So then your like brain can open up to the understanding of why it's not somebody just yeah, especially when you are being paid to help somebody, you're not trying to like hurt them or piss them off. No. <laughs> like that's not no, the intention. We we're trying to them. help you. Safety <laughs> is number one. You know, that's what we said. We're here. That's uh, one. Safety is number one. We don't want to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. You know. Exactly. So, so how yeah. does like what does Sarah prescribe or like to people tell Sarah when she like has her consultation with them? that they want to have a fitness routine and then she sends them your way? Or how does like that all work? If like, I'm just a newbie, I am joining, I'm going to teamfitwithme.com right now. I'm going to sign up to work with Sarah and the whole team. Like, where do you guys come into play? Where do the conversations happen? All right. that stuff. When somebody joins Team Fit With Me, included in their nutrition program is a strength training pro program. So everybody gets that. So what they will do is once they've, you know, filled out their intake form and ha met with Sarah, Jess, and J then they will get a link to set up an appointment with me. And I'll meet with them on Zoom and on their intake form. I've also had the opportunity to read it and to see what their fitness, if any, experience is, mm -hmm. um, if they have any physical limitations, their likes and dislikes. And then we have a conversation, they set up an appointment with me, and I go over all of that. And I discuss with them, you know, how many days a week can you realistically commit to strength training? And this doesn't include cardio because I'm not in charge of prescribing cardio. I am all about strength training. Um, cardio is somebody else's department. Okay. And, um, and so going over where they're going to be training, how much time they want to devote to their training, days of the week they want to do going over any physical limitations they have, then going over their likes and dislikes. And then I write them out a program. And the program, the platform that we use, they can see a video of the exercise being uh, performed as well as written cues that for the exercise, how many reps they should do, how many sets of the exercise they should do, what their recovery time should be. So it's very complete and it, 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 it resonates with all fitness levels. Now, if somebody doesn't, and then they have the opportunity at that time, if they want to get involved in personal training, you know, that's an add on to the service, but everybody that joins team fit with me every 12 weeks will get a new program and I will monitor uh, their, I'll check in with them about a month after they've done their program, just to see if they have any questions but if they have any questions prior to that, I need to hear from them because I can always make adjustments in the program. There could be something they're just not comfortable with or a piece of equipment that they don't have in the gym that I thought perhaps they had. So if there's any problem before I reach out to them, I want to hear from them so I can adjust their program accordingly. And then about 10 weeks into it, I will message them again just to say to set up another appointment, your program's about to expire and we'll go through that. Um, so that's sort of how it goes on my end. And then Billy gets more involved with the training of them. If they want to train, they can train once a week, twice a week, three times a week, once a month. They, there's, there's many options as far as their training goes. Yeah, the training piece is a totally uh, add-on. Um, I'm way too expensive to be included in anything. <laughs> Um, no, you're not that expensive. Battery, very reasonable. Batteries are not uh, included. <laughs> um, but those that are wanting it and are willing to make the investment in themselves, and I would clearly call it an investment, um, I will then get the program from Renee. Uh, typically, my first session, I, my sessions are a half an hour. Um, and if they go 32 minutes, it's because I didn't do something right. <laughs> 
Renee calls me 30 minute Billy and it has nothing to do with anything but training. <laughs> um, but Thanks I'm for clearing that up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, felt, I felt the clarification was important. Um, but seriously, I uh, the first session typically is a little longer because I'll spend some time talking about my approach. You know, I spent two seconds introducing myself because I'm boring as could be, but I like to talk about my approach, about my philosophy. And then from there, we get into a routine. And some people will do a 12 week session and then feel, you know, 12 week series and feel like they've, uh, they're ready to go off and fly out of the proverbial nest. And some people want to stay for, for accountability uh, because they don't choose to store the information about this exercising in their brains. They just want to show up and have somebody tell them what to do. Um, so it's a nice mix of people. And I've had a chance to interact with a lot of the team fit with me clients. And I think that what Renee was talking about earlier, you know, it's truly a concierge service. Um, and, you know, we've always lived our lives that way. We've always been in service related businesses and we've always been really good at putting ourselves in the position of the client or the customer and saying, you know, would this be okay for me? Would I, would this be acceptable for me? And I think that approach and that philosophy really translates very well into bringing a really good value proposition to the folks that join the team because they're really getting what they pay for and more. Yeah. yeah. So for both of you that have been doing this so long, for anybody listening that has not worked out at all, works out all the time, has been doing it two years, 20 years, like obviously you have, you know, you're talking about consistency and keeping it up and like, you know, sometimes it's a struggle like anything in life. Like what would your advice be to try to, you know, always keep the spark for the passion and love for fitness? Well, every workout is not going to be this wonderful breakthrough workout. And I don't always want to go to the gym. Nobody always wants to go. We always have days that we're feeling, eh. But the bottom line is do it. Just keep doing it and be consistent with it. Make the commitment to yourself and then hire a professional to make sure you're you're spending your time um, that you, you you've done you know devoted to the gym that you're you're doing the, the exercises properly invest in yourself know that you're doing it well um, and uh, really just being consistent and it doesn't have to be wonderful every time just get in there get it done even sometimes you don't feel like walking in the door just do it because by the time you walk out you're gonna feel great. And life does throw us all curveballs. That's part of life, whether it be, you know, an injury or health issues. But you find workarounds. And as we get older, um, you know, we have to uh, make modifications and adjustments. But do it. Just don't give it up. I, I think that's the one thing I would say is be consistent. Well, I, if I were speaking to somebody who does nothing, um, and I would speak to them, by the way. <laughs> Um, I'm big on adaptation. That's my big, when I think in terms of resistance training in particular, but in general, I'm big on adaptation and adaptation is all about the body is going to adapt to the outside things that are being, it's being subjected to, right? That's the beginning and the end of adaptation. And there's no such thing as homeostasis. We're never going to stay exactly the same for more than 10 minutes. So we're constantly adapting to what's we're doing what our environment is so i always say if you sit on the couch for too long guess what you're going to start you're going to adapt to look like the couch <laughs> <laughs> so if looking like the couch is in your your bucket list well you're well on your way yeah so i would say to anybody who's not doing anything do something yeah. do something i had a conversation today with somebody at at the pool and and where we're staying and she said what do you think of pilates she said it just like that. <laughs> um, and I said, I think it's great. I think it's great. If, it, But I don't think it should be the only thing. But I think it's a great thing. And if it gets somebody moving, I think it's a great thing. Yeah. Would I say I'm going to be a Pilates instructor and it's going to be my sole means of working out? Absolutely not. But for somebody who's not doing anything, great. If it resonates with you, do it. CrossFit. You know? I think CrossFit is, is the bunch of bullshit. But if you're not doing <laughs> anything else... But if you're not doing anything else, then go to CrossFit. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep moving. Yeah. You know, keep moving. 
Just something is better than nothing. I could do an hour on why CrossFit is bullshit. By <laughs> way, but. Well, and I think it's interesting. I mean, they're just even if you like talk about, I mean, this is its own podcast, its own conversation of just like as you age and bone density and just like the importance of just one basic movement and especially strength training of it's not even, you know, anything about fat loss or aesthetics or anything. It's just like, right. do you want to be able to lift yourself off of that couch <laughs> in, in, in a decade or so? Yeah. Or do you want to be able to just like function and move and not have to avoid stairs or, um, right. you know, just be in pain all the time of just like going for walks on a daily basis or going to drastically cut down your risk of chronic disease one and then two just keep your body like in movement so you can continue to move later so I think that we kind of get lost like thinking of the CrossFit like I'm gonna go and I'm just going to like beat the hell out of myself and I'm doing it for all of these other reasons so I can you know be a hot bitch on Instagram or whatever it is but it's like no, can you, yeah, do you want to get up off the toilet when you're 60 instead of being in pain? Like, it, like you got to think about stuff like that sometimes. Of like, maybe I should just go take an extra lap around the neighborhood. <laughs> well, it, it's interesting because we've had a couple women, you know, joining the team that are like, I want to be able to play with my grandkids. I want to be able to get on and off the floor, you know, and, and yes, that's, it's the most important thing when you want to play, to be able to play and use your body and it's something that we do take for granted when we're younger because usually our body doesn't betray us <laughs> but as we get older you know you start to feel like whoa um but yeah you, you, you just have to keep moving it's so important and also let's not forget that you feel good once you're moving those endorphins are such a powerful drug you know getting out there and taking that walk it just it just elevates your whole mood yeah to do that definitely yeah well awesome this was so great chatting with you guys and getting to know you and like your wealth of knowledge uh and hate Thanks. for crossfit <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> now wait amanda you have a birthday coming up don't you oh i do because i remember last year i got to meet you at your birthday band yes <laughs> Yes. That's yeah. right. That's soon, right? It is. It's August 7th. So it's That's it's it. not not doing the big bash this year. Right. <laughs> that that definitely took a mental toll though to put that thing together. So maybe a, awesome. a, another time. But yeah, it was so awesome that you and Sarah like flew out to Cincinnati to come to the event. Yeah, it was amazing. And I love that we had like whole team fit with me tables and that you got to meet so many people in person. Like that, I mean. I would love to do that again. I just did not have the bandwidth with buying a new house and starting a new job this year. <laughs> I, I, I understand. Tell you something funny on that note. I had been training somebody for a little over a year and I had, and who lives out in the Cincinnati mm -hmm. area. And I surprised her. She had oh. no idea I was coming. And so when I walked into the room at your event, and she looked at me, and the first thing she said is, you lied to me, because I told her I couldn't train that uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> you got busted. She, said, she looks, she goes, you lied to me. <laughs> it's the only lie I've ever told her. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> but but it, was, it was good fun, and it was a very fun event. It was lovely to be there and have a happy birthday. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was great to have you. And then um, I definitely, I've, I've talked to Sarah about this, and I would like to do something like that again. So maybe... Next year, maybe not birthday, not bring you to Cincinnati in August. Maybe find a <laughs> a less maybe the fall. <laughs> yeah, the fall, not as humid and gross time of year. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> well, Billy and Renee, thank you so much. And TeamFitWithMe.com if you want to work with these guys. And I really appreciate your time. Amanda, thank you, thank you so, so much. much. Was, thank you. you. You're a great host. Thank you. Thanks for having us. AmandaValentineBites.com.